The last atom that we saw at explaining bonding in molecules was the VSEPR theory, balance shell electron pair repulsion theory. And it did a beautiful job of helping us predict the geometry of different molecules. And the whole premise of this theory was based on electron pair repulsions. That the electron pairs would arrange themselves around a central atom to minimize the repulsion. And that determined the geometry of the molecule. For instance, this is the Lewis dot structure of water, H2O. While this is how the molecule arranges itself spatially, this arrangement gives the least amount of repulsion between the electron pairs, both the lone pair of electrons as well as the bond pair of electrons. And from here you can see that the electronic geometry or the way in which the electrons are arranged is according to tetrahedral geometry. Whereas if you look at the molecular geometry which is not inclusive of the lone pairs, we get a bent shape. So this is how VSEPR theory helps us predict the geometry of different molecules. But unfortunately, the theory did have several limitations. Like it does not take into account the size of the atoms. The fact that larger atoms can push the smaller atoms significantly and affect the shape of the molecule. It also does not consider the effect of multiple bonds. The theory simply assumes multiple bonds to behave like single bonds. So clearly this was not a foolproof theory. To overcome these limitations, let's look at another important approach towards bonding called the valence bond theory. VB theory is a quantum mechanical model that explains bonding in terms of overlap of atomic orbitals. You see, when two atoms, let's say A and B approach each other, there are both attractive and repulsive forces at play here. For example, the nucleus of atom A and the electron of atom B would experience an attractive force. On the other hand, the nucleus of atom A and the nucleus of atom B would experience repulsive force. Similarly, these are the other attractive and repulsive forces that are acting here. As these two atoms approach each other, at a certain stage the attractive forces and the repulsive forces balance out each other. Now if you look at it graphically, this is how it looks. And you can see that as the atoms are approaching each other, the attractive forces begin to increase and at a certain stage these two forces balance out each other. And when that happens, the potential energy is at a minimum and the two atoms are in stability by bonding. Now this minimum in the curve is also called bond enthalpy. Bond enthalpy or bond energy is the amount of energy that is released when a bond is formed. From here we can also see that after this stage when you push the atoms further, the potential energy increases and makes the system highly unstable because now the repulsive forces will dominate the attractive forces. The repulsive forces between the nucleus of the two atoms become much more dominant. So this is the equilibrium position at which bonding happens. Now the valence bond theory explains this bonding as the overlap of atomic orbitals of atoms A and B. As the two atoms approach each other, their electron clouds start overlapping and this overlap allows the electrons to be closer to the nuclei of both the atoms. And it is this region of overlap where we find the shared pair of electrons that make up the covalent bond. Greater the overlapping of the atomic orbitals, stronger would be the covalent bond. Now there are conditions for this overlap to actually transform into a stable bond. And according to VB theory, only positive overlap can result in a covalent bond. Positive overlap occurs when the atomic orbitals have the same sign and orientation in space. That is, the wave functions of the atomic orbitals are in the same phase. So obviously, a positive overlap would result in a region of high electron density between the nuclei of the combining atoms. So in each of these cases you can see that the overlap is happening between the orbitals that are in the same phase. Now when you look at the negative and zero overlapping, you can see that in both of these cases the combining or the overlapping atomic orbitals are out of phase. If you look at the negative overlap, you can see that in each of these cases the overlapping wave functions are of the opposite phases. Whereas in zero overlapping, they are out of phase because of the difference in the direction of orientation of the orbitals. Here you can see that a cancellation happens, whereas in this case you cannot have an overlapping between a px and py orbitals as they are oriented in different directions. px along the x-axis and py orbital is oriented along the y-axis. 
So clearly you can see that according to BB theory, the bonding happens only when there is positive overlap. And based on the overlapping of different types of orbitals, we get different types of bonds. Head-on overlap or axial overlap of orbitals would give us a sigma bond. As you can see here, the SS, SP and the PP orbitals are all overlapping axially or they are having a head-on overlap here. Whereas, when they have a parallel overlap, in that case we get a different type of bond called the pi bond. Here, the axes of the orbitals are parallel to each other but they are perpendicular to the internuclear axis. The head-on or the axial overlap takes place to a larger extent as compared to the parallel overlapping of the atomic orbitals which is why sigma bond is stronger than the pi bond. Because as we mentioned before, greater the overlap, stronger will be the chemical bond, right? Now all of this postulates of VB theory makes a lot of sense when we think about bonding, correct? But unfortunately that was not the case. The simple overlapping of atomic orbitals could not explain bonding and geometry in molecules. And we needed further modifications in the valence bond theory to explain the shapes of these molecules. And that modification is otherwise called hybridization. So let's learn more about hybridization in the next video.